Welcome to the Tech Today podcast powered by CEO Raider. Visit us at CEO Raider. Rate your company. Rate your CEO. Everything's anonymous. Visit us at Tech Today where we publish content around technology and the capital markets. As of late, it's been all capital markets since the COVID outbreak. And we are firmly entrenched in the bear camp. You cannot have 40 million people out of work and think that you're going to have a V recovery. You're not going to have a vaccine. Sorry. Phase one, phase two, phase three, it gets progressively more difficult. It is not an easy thing to bring a, a drug to market, despite all the positive rhetoric out of the administration. That's a lot of fluff around getting elected. The administration is clearly propping up the market, providing liquidity to the market so that the equity fixed income markets are well positioned come the election. There is a ton of hot air in the markets. And it will end. I think some of it ends in the month of July as we have the June quarter earnings reports. I think uh, more people will come to the realization in October, coming off of the September quarter reports. I think more people will be disappointed when companies start to give 2021 guidance. And people start to realize it's going to be a long, tough slog. Hotels aren't going to come back overnight. Air travel is not going to come back overnight. A lot of the jobs that were lost were lost permanently. Right? Th- those people who worked for J.C. Penney, J. Crew, Nordstrom, Pier One. When, when those companies file and they restructure, that's not to say that they cease operations. Although Pier One is liquidating. Excuse me. They don't necessarily cease operations, but when they restructure, they get slimmer. So you're going to lose employees. In October, the airlines will start to let go employees as the uh, bailout dissipates. Uh, a contingency of the of the bailout was that they could not fire employees. They had to, if they wanted to slim down the workforce, it had to be executives, and so. There have been a number of executive cuts, and you'll see more in the employee base. I suspect that there'll be a further bailout of the airlines. There'll be some political heat around it, but they'll get they'll get some tranche. I think American Airlines probably doesn't survive. I think GE probably doesn't survive. In General Electric, you have a company with heavy exposure to the airlines. Maybe they break even on the operating profit line this year. Maybe they break even in terms of cash flow. I've heard people speculate that, hey, they could always sell assets if they had to. Don't be so sure. You know, a tough economy, it's tough, difficult to get a favorable price for an asset. It's difficult to do deals in a, diff- in a, in a challenging economy. Buyers want... Uh, you know, floor pricing, if they're going to absorb a lot of risk, and, and GE's got a lot of risk outside of the healthcare business. So they've already sold Biopharma. I guess they could sell healthcare. And then what are you left with? The industrial businesses, all those long term care policies. What is that worth? Even as presently constituted today, there's not $54 billion worth of equity at GE. And then you start peeling away assets like the healthcare business. It's So that stock's going lower. Um, All of the expensive SaaS companies in software land, they have to go lower. They're at record highs. So we're currently in a bubble. So we've published a, a fair amount of content as of late. I would encourage you to check out Mr. Market is Trading on Speculation. Fundamentals will matter again. That's available at Tech Today. We published that on May 18th. And our, our theory there is that you're not going to have a vaccine short term. Um, a lot of the jobs that people think, that investors think, are going to be there for employees to slot back into simply aren't going to be there. Right? I mean, a number of these jobs are just gone permanently. And we're seeing trimming across the board whether it's the companies I mentioned earlier that have filed or whether it's Uber, Airbnb, 
small tech companies. Check out the layoff.com if you want to track technology company layoffs. A lot of those jobs aren't coming back. And then you get pushback. Some investors think some investors think that, well, it's it's it, it, it's great the the companies are making these cuts and protecting earnings. Yeah, it's great that they're protecting earnings, but you can't cut your way to prosperity. You know, so as you as you cut heads across sales, marketing, customer support, engineering, last, you know, presumably at some point you're cutting into muscle a little bit. You're not just cutting away people who may not be the most productive people in the organization, but you're losing real talent. And that's another reason why I think that when we start to get to the back half of this year, particularly Q4 and into 2021, it's a reason why revenue growth rates aren't just going to snap back for these companies and normalize within two or three quarters. It's more like two or three years. We published an article entitled Work From Home Is Here To Stay. I may have talked about that earlier. I, I don't recall. We've had Jack Dorsey, CEO of Twitter, CEO of Square, say that his employees at both firms could work at home permanently if they so choose. So chose all employees that applies to. We talk about the examples of two companies, Automatic and GitLab, that were founded as distributed companies where all employees work whether it's at home or for some other location, work from anywhere. And I think you're going to see more of that for sure with functions like uh, software development. We don't necessarily need to be in an office. I could see more community spaces within offices as opposed to assigned offices and assigned cubicles. You have more shared space. And so, net, net, there's going to be downward pressure on commercial real estate pricing, particularly in expensive areas that are tech heavy, like San Francisco. The Bay Area is for sure going to see CRE price pressure. So, check, the, check out the examples of Automatic and GitLab in our article entitled Work from Home is Here to Stay. That's an interesting one. They are hyper organized companies and hyper transparent. And the one we published today was market euphoria and perspective. The fact that we are in a bubble, the fact how this bubble, while it has different attributes than previous bubbles insofar as the, the cause, you know, COVID is very different than you know, like the mortgage bubble, for example, where you had a credit crunch and then things sort of self-imploded on the credit side and then bled out into other sectors of the economy. So the, the cause is very different here. But now you have a bubble in the market that's being exposed. And that's brought on by the what I refer to sometimes as socialist policies, the, 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 the bailouts, the liquidity that the government's pumped into the system since the 28-2009 downturn where quantitative easing has just become a way of life to the point where now you have the Fed actually buying corporate securities, high-grade, high-yield bonds, essentially zero interest rates. So you have this massive inflation of valuations in the equity markets and the fixed income markets as well with all of this Fed liquidity. And so this bubble is, is a bubble, and all bubbles have shared characteristics. And we point you to one of the better books that's ever been written on bubbles. And if you click on the article, we take you right to the, the Kindle edition of the book, which we did not write. A Short History of Financial Euphoria, John Kenneth Gilbert. And you can check that out. And what's coming out tomorrow? We have a piece about passive versus active and how... You know, eventually active is going to have to lead us in this market. You know, at the moment, you have a lot of um, active managers just chasing performance, trying to top tick the market. But when eventually it does implode, you're going to need to have active managers lead us out through stock selection. You're not going to be able to just buy everything. And we go into a little bit of detail as to how this 
massive rotation into passive investment vehicles over the past decade or so has made the market less efficient. And that's all I'll say in the preview about our passive versus active piece. It's a short piece. It'll be out at 4.15 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow morning. So that's all for now. See you next time.